Hey, what's up guys? Another knife review today. Actually, it's nighttime. You can't tell because of the lighting, but it is nighttime right now. So, new knife for tonight. Um, this is the CRKT Karaman. People have been uh, waiting for this review since I first showed this. Um, I've been waiting to do a review since I first saw it at a SHOT Show um, in Vegas. Actually, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Alan Foltz at SHOT Show. Uh, here's a picture of us together. It's actually a funny story because I went up to the, uh, the CRKT booth with Christina and uh, Alan Foltz was there, but I was distracted. I was uh, talking to Joel and talking about some knife stuff going on and at the corner of my eye I saw that he was talking to Christina and I walked over and she's like, oh, that nice guy you know, complimented me on my knife. I'm like, yeah, he created it. She was wearing the, uh, the CRKT minimalist uh, you know, around her neck at the show. So she's like, oh my God, that's so funny. He's like, yeah, I know I had no idea who he was. I'm like, yeah, Alan Foltz, pretty cool dude. And some awesome designs. I have to say, if money wasn't an option at all, although they're not incredibly expensive, they're not ridiculous or anything, but my top maybe 50 knives of all time that I have to have before I die would be a custom minimalist from Alan. Um, just, I mean, I love the CRKT version so much. All of them, all the uh, varieties, they fit so nicely in the hand. I would love to have a custom version of it. But anyway, this one here is the Karaman. You can see it's just a, a play on words. It's a minimalist and it's a Karambit style. So Karaman, Karambit minimalist. Pretty cool, very extreme hawkbill on this. Um, the first thing I can say about it is it's badass. This is one of the coolest looking knives that I've seen in a long time. It, it just screams awesome, all right? I mean, is it functional? Well, we'll get to that, but if nothing else at all, it's a really cool knife to have and look at and own and play with and, and cut stuff with. Um, same as all the other minimalists in that you have a three finger twirl here and your fingers melt in here. It is ridiculous. I, I really have a hard time even sitting and thinking about it for a few minutes of a more ergonomic, more comfortable knife of this size. All right, of course there are bigger knives. It's a whole different thing that are very, very comfortable. But for a small knife, for a neck knife, you can't beat it. There's just nothing, period. I can't think of anything else. It fits so beautifully in the hand. Um, there's a very slight uh, ramp on here, a thumb ramp. Your thumb nestles very nicely. The jimping on here is very functional. Okay, really locks the thumb in. Your hand's not going anywhere. If you want to choke up on here, you can see how my thumb, I mean, it's, it, it's not by mistake. That's a, a design thing. Um, I usually don't do this though, just for reference. I would just grab it like this, or believe it or not, because it's small, a lot of times when I'm going to use it, I kind of do a little pinch grip, kind of like this, you know, and I'll cut a box open. Just ergonomically, I've talked to this before, but you know, you feel a knife and you play with it, oh, it's awesome, right? But when you go to cut things, a lot of times, you're not holding it the same way. You may go into a knife shop if you have the opportunity to ever, and you pick up a knife, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna use that all the time, just like that. Nope, you gotta get home and you gotta go like this, and that's how you gotta use it, you know, or some other way. So it's actually an interesting thing. Try this, you know, when you're playing with your knives, get a good grip on them, right? And notice exactly how you're holding them. Next time you go to use them, take a look at your hand. Guaranteed, you're probably not holding it the exact same way. Just an interesting little experiment. But anyway, um, you know, you can reference the, uh, the other minimalist reviews that I've done, uh, and you basically get the same thing. The only difference really is the blade uh, design overall. But for people who haven't seen those other ones, um, the specs on this, 2.31 inch blade. Again, very extreme hawkbill on here. Both hawkbill blades might end here. This uh, extends out quite a bit. It's very, very acute, very, very pointy. Bead blast finish on this. This is a full tang knife, by the way. Scales are G10, although they won't say G10, but it's the same thing. It's a resin impregnated, you know, material and it's layered up. I love the coloring on this. These do get somewhat random. And what I mean by that is that how this contours, like see I have this little blurb of green here. Yours may not, maybe yours is here. So depending, everyone is slightly different because of the laying process. What I like about this one in current production minimalists across the board is that the, the coloring is much more defined. You really see the color. The first ones, when they first came out, they were kind of muddied up. And what I mean by that, and you can reference the video, is that just the contouring in it, how it, it landed, at least the one that I had, my specific example was it was very mixed in between layers. So it's, it looked really dark. I could hardly tell any color. This is fantastic. You can clearly see the layers here of black and green. 
really, really nice. Um, these do come with a very small lanyard. I always cut mine off just because it's it's a preference thing. Probably should have kept it on for review, but I just I don't like it. I mean, it does obviously have a three finger twirl here, so it does give you something else to grip in your pinky. Pretty much any size hand. I just don't prefer it, so I always cut mine off. But it is it's like a tether cord. It's a, a smaller diameter than a paracord, and it's braided really nice, and it's about yay long or so. You can reference pictures for that if you want. Um, the weight on these are 1.7 ounces, hardly weighs anything at all. Full length, even though this is a, a weird shaped uh, knife overall, it's still 4.78 inches. So it's small, it's light, and it's extremely capable. Steel on these are 5CR 15 MOV. It is soft. It's the only, well, one of two hits on this knife. I love this knife, but it just doesn't hold an edge all that well. And the only other thing besides this should be obvious to the knife people. It may not be obvious, to, you know, to the people who aren't knife nuts. You know, if you happen to watch the channel for other things or maybe kind of getting interested in knives for the first time, you might overlook the fact that this is a very delicate tip. Okay. Although it's very, very cool looking, uh, maybe not the best for EDC purposes. I would really recommend this more as a, a backup blade. I wouldn't be using this all the time just because it's so fine. You have a greater tendency to snap that off. All right, there's a swedge on top here. It's 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 a little thin. Um, it's fantastic if you're defending yourself. I mean, it, it's the hawkbill blade, karambit style knives. Uh, there's nothing better in my opinion. If you had a double-edged karambit style knife for for self-defense, obviously it mimics the natural claw shape of an animal. It, it's very organic. It's very very purposeful and it cuts through flesh and, and meat and you know skin like nobody's business, but guaranteed most of you aren't using your knives for that, at least not daily or monthly or yearly or maybe never in your entire life. So as far as a utility knife, would definitely recommend the other blade shapes over this one, okay? That being said, I carried it, I used it, I did not baby it, and I got lucky. I didn't have the tip snap off or anything. I did not cut any plastic ties. If you were cut um, zip ties, plastic strips of any kind, um, you know, any denser material like that, I think you would run into problems and eventually snap that tip. Cardboard paper, it's been fine. I've ripped open packages. It bites like, like nobody's business. If you look at where your hand is, all right, let me hold it like this because it's easier. Look at where that tip is, all right, in, in accordance with like my fingers. If I just go to cut into something, that tip is in that before my hand gets anywhere near it, all right? Use the reference of like cutting food on a, a cutting board. You know, sometimes knives that your edge is past your fingers, they're better slicers because just, you know, how you're holding it ergonomically and, you know, where the material is, the medium that you're actually cutting, when it dips down past your fingers, it, it tends to be a better slicer, better cutter, not in the geometry of the blade, but in the fact of its actual position in accordance with your hand. Um, that's why a lot of people like, you know, like Sandoku knives, the ones that are basically the blade is in line with the edge of your fingers. But this is so far past the fingers that if I go to cut into something, like let's say, I don't know, I'm cutting open a package or something, you know, I go to dip down, the tip is in, in the box before I even know it. And then of course, because of this heavy curve here, as I'm slicing it, it has a really good, you know, slicing capability. It's just that 5CR15 MOV does not hold that grave an edge. It is a very soft steel. It's just the way it is. It's all about pricing. They can, I'm sure they can make these in S30V and I'm sure they'd fly off the shelves, but they would be much more expensive. You know, even in other options, 154CM or whatever the case may be. But different companies work with different steels and they have different knives and different price brackets for a reason. So I love to see an upgraded version of this. Maybe not this particular design, even though it's my favorite, for actual use. I'd like to see one of the other ones, you know, maybe a little clip point or something that, along those lines, or even the one clip version with a higher end steel and a higher price tag. Because I still think that they would fly off the shelves. One of the best knives they've ever put out is the Minimalist line. So absolutely awesome. But as far as price, 20 to $25 for these, I love it. I really, really love this. And I don't want to say it's a novelty knife because it's not. You can certainly use it. But because that tip's fragile, I, I don't recommend it for a constant EDC blade. Having it as a neck knife and probably being a knife person, if you're watching this video, you probably have a main knife in your pocket anyway. So it's not the, the worst thing in the world to have this hanging off your neck and for some reason you want to go to grab it and use it, that's fine. But if you use this day in and day out, you will snap that tip eventually. It's just very fragile. It will exceed in a lot of different things, opening mail, opening packages, that's fine. But if you put it, you know, really, really put it to use, you will eventually have some problems with that tip, just by design. Um, 
That being said, I still recommend it as a badass knife and a must have for any knife person. And it is a usable knife. Just keep in mind you're gonna have to sharpen that. And don't be intimidated by that curve. I mean, any kind of uh, you know rod system, sharpening system, very easy to, uh, to sharpen these up. I know a lot of people get very freaked out. Oh my God, how do I sharpen that? It's pretty straightforward. You know, there's a lot of good information on YouTube, on the forums. I'll do more videos in the future uh, sharpening. Don't be intimidated by that. But uh, anyway, one uh, quick note with this one. This is one of the first production runs, and you can see there's a hole in the blade there, and that serves no other purpose besides being aesthetic. Um, they do not currently have these. If you look at current production models, they will not have the hole. It will just be solid. They got rid of it. It's another step, another process. So it's no longer going to be on there. I guess originally it's like, okay, there's a bunch of steel here. Let's do something. Let's poke a hole in there. You know, why not? Uh, I like it. I kind of like it better with the hole, just for aesthetic purposes. It serves no, no function, really. But uh, anyway, if you get one off the shelves today, you're probably not going to see the hole. That's all. I just want to make a note there in case you're like, hey, wait a minute. I saw the video and where's my hole? I don't have a hole. They missed it. They forgot. No, they didn't forget. Just a small design change post uh, first production. So... Anyway, it's small, it's lightweight, it is a hell of a cutter. It's just a little bit on the fragile side, um, and the steel is soft. So keep that in mind. Uh, as far as the sheath system, um, it may be a downside, you guys. It, it took me all of five minutes to get this, get a hang of this. Because of the blade shape, you have to pivot into the handle. Okay, we're so used to slotting knives in and out, you know, that's not going to work with this. You have to literally come in and pivot as if you're going around in a circle to get that blade in properly without hooking the, uh, the sheath inside there. All right, and also when you're taking it out, you have to pivot just slightly, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna basically catch the tip on the inside of that sheath and it's gonna get you know caught or stuck. It's gonna snag up. If you try to push this in straight, you know, you're gonna find yourself doing this is okay. You're a human being. You don't have to you know, know this right out of the box, but trust me, when you first get this, you're gonna go boop, 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 and then eventually you get it, right? It takes, like I said, all five minutes of just practicing a little bit. Go easy. Don't force anything. Obviously, if there's resistance, it's not good, except for when you get it at the very end. All right? But as soon as you practice a little bit, it's no big deal to get in and out. Um, as far as hanging it on my neck, I always switch to the ball and chain, by the way. This does not come with it. I like the ball and chain. It's just my preference. But how I carry, I always carry the handle down. And in this case, I looped it in such a manner so the handle is still down just by how it's balanced. So... Anyway, that's it. That's the CRKT Karaman. If you like the minimalist line of knives, you already have one, you love it, get this one for the collection. You can use it, but like I said, not my top choice for you know, a knife you're actually going to be using day in and day out. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I will see you soon. Take care.